So from an internal audit kind of a role, you can move to a risk assessor. This is more an analytical role which requires a very good understanding of the policies, of the standards and also of the risks that an organization could face. So your expertise and understanding an organization is crucial to be able to suggest, to give recommendations to an organization as to how to address risks and how to manage them. So to be able to do this, an analytical mind is very crucial because you need to actually know where these risks lie. Now at the ground reality, at a very micro level, you might not see risks. But when you look at data at a whole, at a macro level, you will start understanding patterns. You will start understanding situations that could have huge ramifications for a specific company. Let's take for example, we are talking about tax risk. So tax is a huge area. And if your company that you work for is located across different continents, different countries, then there is a possibility that your organization unknowingly or knowingly might actually move profits from one location to another location, which could have a lot of transurprising ramifications. So for you to understand that, it's so important to understand how the organization is structured, to understand where to look for, to understand how these profits are allocated between these organizations. And for this, you need to have a very strong analytical mindset. So once you have this great mindset of understanding this technical aspect of work, you actually can also move into the next state where you actually go into business valuation. So what is business valuation? So let's take a Kirana store next to you. It's run by one individual. It's a small shop, a 10 by 10 shop, but it is completely filled with a lot of very interesting props or day-to-day -day items. What is the value of his business? Now think of Reliance or think of Dmart. Look at a global chain like Walmart. They have stores across the world. They have tons of employees, they have billions of dollars of products. What is the valuation of a business like that? Take a startup in the technology space or a defense manufacturing organization or a futuristic organization in the space. The valuation of these businesses have its own processes, have its own approach and they follow certain guidelines. But the basics of this is your analytical mind, your understanding of how to analyze these companies, how to look for value and following the framework which will be taught to you or which you can learn. So once you expertise, or once you have a good understanding of business valuation, you can also move into investment advisory. Investment advisory, as all of us know, we want to make our hard earned money work better for us. We put a lot of effort in actually making that growth happen. But is that money really giving us the dividends? Or for that matter, it could be actually buying a company. So your company might be wanting to purchase another company or might want to look at investing in bonds or in stock markets in guiding your organization in actually taking the right decision based on the risks involved in those decisions. So investment advisory is an approach where you need to really understand the different kinds of asset classes and understand how to evaluate them and know how to track the best performing assets that match your organization's requirements. Requirements could be in terms of liquidity, could be in terms of growth, could be in terms of opportunity. So now, from a complete analytical perspective, there are different other areas where you could really expertise in. Now let's look at tax opinions. Tax is a huge area of work. The government wants to ensure that its laws and regulations are properly instituted and it is not at a loss where the organization is not following with its guidelines and its, its procedures. So you could actually have a lot of areas where there are, it's grey. How do you actually price products when your organization is actually shipping your own manufactured product from one company to another company, from one country to another country. So let's take a situation that your organization is actually manufacturing a shoe. It's a world class shoe. The shoe is priced at 20,000 rupees. Now, most possibility, the shoe is not going to be completely prepared in one country in this globalized world. So let's say the shoe is actually the sole of this shoe and certain leather work is done by a factory in Pondicherry, like in the case of Lee Atlius, the holding company of Louis Vuitton, the most premium shoe and you know accessories manufacturing brand in the world. After all these accessories are made, it's then shipped to its holding company 
in France, in Paris. There, they assemble these products and then they prepare the complete product, which is sold at 20,000 rupees to about a lakh for a shoe, just for one shoe. So, the government of India might actually find the price at which these accessories are priced when they are shipped from India to its holding company in France is not fair. Because the French company is making enormous amounts of profits and they want to save tax in India because the tax rates in India are higher than those in France or vice versa. The French government might say, you guys are retaining more money in India and you are paying me less tax. That's where your tax opinion come into picture. Where you could give guidance to companies saying, what should be your structure of taxation that prevents conflict, that prevents a liability where the government can come at your company and say, pay me more tax, resulting in huge losses and ramifications.